Hi all, we're here today at Seagraph 2019 catching up with the Kronos Group on the newly launched initiative and effort, the 3D Commerce Working Group. Joining me is Neil Trevet, President of the Kronos Group, and Shrenik, the Chair for the Working Group. Neil, Shrenik, thanks so much for taking the time to join us today for this brief interview. Thank you. You're, you're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Shrenik, on July 26th, the 3D Commerce Group transitioned to a working group inside Kronos. What problem did the participants see that, and what were they trying to come together to solve? Sure, um, so 3D has been evolving as a medium for merchandising. I think uh, it's uh, getting to a point where it's going to be ubiquitous and you know, it's gonna be everywhere. It's gonna be in uh, ads, search results, um, retailer-driven experiences like uh, augmented reality experiences, virtual reality, on the websites, so it's gonna be everywhere. And um, one of the issues that we face today is that it's, um, as, um, as, a, as a content creator or as a retailer, when I, when I build an asset, I'm not confident that it can actually be rendered consistently across different platforms. So um, we're gonna solve that as, the, we, saw, we see that as a big issue and that's, that's what we're trying to go after. We're trying to make it, um, we're, we're trying to uh, inspire some confidence in content creators and retailers um, to say that if, if somebody creates an asset, uh, you, it, they, it's, they need to be pretty sure that it's, it's going to um, look the same across different platforms. Right, so it's really trying to scale it up to industrial scale, yes. right? Because right. we've kind of known what the technology issues are, but it's getting everything to work seamlessly and effectively in a, in a pipeline, that's really the yes, issue. Yes, and there are so many emerging platforms, and so um, if, I, if I create an asset today, I'm not 100% uh, uh, confident that it will look the same across all these platforms. And so we're trying to make sure that you, are, you can be confident. So what does that mean for the retail industry and consumers? So um, we're hoping that, so today, like, when you think of like the, the life cycle of a virtual product or a 3D model for a product, right? There's, there's tool vendors, there's uh, content creators, there's retailers, and then these, there are platforms where you see this content, right? Uh, so today, I think everyone is working on this problem in a very siloed manner. And so um, we, we need to kind of get the industry together. And so if we can get all of these different actors um, on the same page, then it's gonna be a lot more um, efficient or streamlined to produce this content and actually consume this content. So um, it's gonna bring down costs for, for building these or for creating these 3D assets. Therefore, there's gonna be more 3D assets and more people can create these 3D assets and it will lead to the acceleration of 3D in this industry. Right, and I think one of the really interesting things about this group is that it brings together kind of a unique combination of the technology companies mm -hmm. and the retailers. I think that hasn't really happened before in such, such a concerted way, right? Exactly, so if, as a retailer, I'm super excited about interacting with the technology platform. This is, a, this, is a, this is a channel in which I can interact with all the other players in this industry to kind of, uh, you know, to get them on the same page, to have them hear the problems that retailers are facing, and yeah. which is never, it's like a forum for us. So it's, yeah. it's, well, and it's exciting from the technology vendors too, because we have the actual end users, people deploying yes. this technology out there in, in the industry, telling us what the problems are and helping exactly. us solve them. This is, no, this is, Perfection. We're gonna, we're gonna get on the same page. <laughs> so, Neil, talk to us about how the group found Kronos Group. Say again. How did this group find Kronos? So, um, so Kronos is really interested in um, finding out what problems are in the industry, and we really welcome people that come to Kronos with uh, suggestions for collaborative projects that can make a difference uh, in the industry. So we actually have a um, new initiative process, and if a group of companies comes uh, to Kronos, we first um, set up an exploratory group. Um, so we bring a quorum of the industry together to decide, can we agree on what the problem is we're trying to solve? And then, can we agree that there are some useful steps that collaboration can provide for us to move the, the industry past that problem? And you know, with, the, with the 3D Commerce group, it's been, you know, it's been actually pretty amazing. The exploratory group uh, expanded into you know, 70 companies really quickly, which I think really talks to there is a real opportunity here, uh, a real problem to be solved. And um, the group did agree that 
we should collaborate, and they came up with some pretty clear goals, which I think are quite um, achievable. I think the group had a good discussion, keeping it down to the minimum, for a minimum viable product type approach, so we can get some uh, easily achieved um, steps and objectives uh, um, under our belt, and then we can move forward and you know, gradually tackle the bigger problems too. I just want to kind of echo what you say there. Um, the, the, the process for, for creating this, or for formalizing this initiative, or formalizing this effort, has been um, very smooth, and we've been like really appreciative of, of Kronos's efforts to kind of, you know, um, to, of just supporting uh, retailers and um, newer members who kind of join Kronos, Kronos and help out with this effort. The reason from, from our perspective, like why we want to be involved with Kronos is we think um, Kronos has been doing this for the last like 20, 20 years 20 almost. Years. There you go. So, um, and so they've established themselves as a very credible standards body and we would, uh, and it seems like they're already working on parts of the solution so it would be great if, if, if this effort um, finds a home in Kronos, it, it, it becomes a lot easier to interact with the other, other efforts that are in, in progress and you know uh, we can kind of all work towards the solution together. Yeah. Great. So how quickly did Kronos see interest from the industry after the 3D initiative was brought in front of the Kronos board and formed into an exploratory group? Pretty quick, right? It was, uh, we, we formed the exploratory group in April of 2019. It's July 2019 now, and so it's taken us, you know, less than. That's right. It's, it's, yeah. been, it's about three months of actual uh, discussion, and again, it was great how how quickly the the companies kind of gathered around uh, the initiative. Um, and it's interesting, right? Many people think that standards organisations are slow. <laughs> they don't have to be. Yeah. Standards organisations are kind of as fast as the. People participating right. want them right. to be. If there's an urgency and a real need, then the things can actually move pretty fast. Yeah, and it speaks to the problem, right? I think uh, it, it's it's very clear that there is a problem, and it's uh, the fact that it's taken us such less time to kind of form an official working group, uh, kind of is uh, um, is another like um, I guess is evidence of like this problem actually existing, and it's a really important problem. Yeah, it actually felt like kind of the right speed actually, because okay. it's possible to go too fast, right? If you go too fast, then People aren't really buying into the proposition. Right. Um, now, building that consensus is kind of a process you have to go through. And, and I, that's that's where you come in, Kronos. Like, as in, like, that's where Neil comes in. That's where the whole Kronos team comes in, where you're actually like kind of helping us. Um, you know, you're helping us like run the effort at the right pace and the right time to kind of make sure that everyone's voice is heard. And so that's a, it's kind of it's kind of a very mutually kind of symbiotic relationship. Some steps to go through to yes. to get to the goal faster. Yeah. So that's great. Um, and now that the 3D Commerce Group is an official working group inside Kronos, what will be the focus of the work? Sure. Um, so there are a few problems that we've identified and a few, um, I guess, um, we'll attempt to solve it in these, the following ways, right? So one of the biggest issue that we've seen is um, that the consistency of rendering across the different platforms, um, like they're just not consistent today. So we're going to figure out how we can um, we can make um, rendering across different platforms consistent. So that's kind of the number one uh, problem um, that we want to solve. And so that'll probably be our biggest uh, effort. Um, on the other hand, um, there's, apart from just like showing the actual product, um, we want to show information about the product, right? So how do you standardize information about products across retailers across the globe? So if we can do that, then it will make um, anybody who's showing the end user an experience uh, that has a virtual product in it, they can show the information in a very consistent way. So people can consume the information in, in a very easy way. So that's one of the efforts that we're working on. Um, there's also um, products come in multiple variations, right? So you, you can get a couch in different colors, different. you can get a bed in different sizes. So uh, we want to be able to let the end customer experience the different product options in a very authentic way that the retailer originally intended to, right? So if, if so we, we want to somehow support that. So that's another uh, focus area. And, you know, having these specifications and while we're solving all these different problems, we'll come up with specifications, we'll come up with um, different ways of uh, align, aligning the industry. But it's not enough to just put that out there, right? We have to kind of figure out how to 
let people um, know how to produce content in the way we want them to produce content. So we're going to establish some guidelines and some, um, some example workflows to help people produce content in the right way. Right, that's right. It goes right back to the tools, right? Because right. if we can start the process off in the right way with the yes. design tools that people are using to create these products in the first place to feed the process with the right kind of data, then all the later stages become easier. And I think you know, the group's been discussing how there might be a, a, a mixture of deliverables, right? There might be some you know, actual specifications, you know, open mm -hmm. standards. There might be some guidelines. There might be some open source tools. Now, there's going to be quite a combination of deliverables, I think. Yes, and the, the, the uh, 3D industry and the retail industry, they've, they're, being, they've, they're evolving in such a kind of fast pace that, you know, um, it's tough to kind of actually kind of look out like a year from now and see like what the state of the industry would be. So we'll keep evolving as the industry evolves. And so we'll kind of, you know, keep a real pulse. We'll keep, we'll keep a check on the real pulse of the right. industry. And it might go beyond uh, Gen 2. Yes. It might go beyond just display. It might go into search and capture of, of different devices, of products, and you know, creating that buy button for you search. I mean, that, <laughs> you, do, do you think that might be a, a yeah, tangible maybe. thing? Yes, I think so. I think that those are uh, definitely ways in which we can evolve the group. I think once we actually solve these first set of problems that we spoke about earlier, uh, there will be a lot more things that, you know, that we'll, we'll go after. Right. So yeah, we're hoping to kind of standardize the entire experience across every platform for retail, so, right. yeah. That's great. So how does an interested company get involved in this effort? Do they need to be a member? So I think we're going to um, end up with, with two levels of involvement. We have the exploratory group um, where these initial discussions have occurred. And to join the exploratory group, we asked to ask people to sign an NDA, that there's no cost to get involved. Um, but to actually to do the detailed design work, we, we uh, are asking comp companies to become Kronos members. Um, that's because we need them to come under the Kronos IP framework uh, and agree to follow the, the, the Kronos membership uh, processes and, and uh, guidelines uh, that we have. And, and the membership fees you know, keep Kronos operating. You know, this, all this stuff doesn't happen for, for free. But I think we're going to keep the exploratory group op open as well. So um, th not everyone in the exploratory group probably will want to join and do the detailed design. But the companies that want to stay in the exploratory group can still be, play a valu valuable role in making sure you know, they're feeding in requirements and feedback on uh, the work that the working group is actually doing. Great. Well, Neil Shrinik, um, it seems like we're out of time right now, but thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. And if viewers want to learn more about the 3D Commerce Working Group and Kronos, we encourage you to go to the Kronos website at kronos.org. Yes, kronos.org is the place to go. <laughs> Slash 3D Commerce. <laughs> and thank you, Shrinik, for all the effort you've been putting into getting this initiative off the ground. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Neil, for all the support. <laughs>